All right, welcome back to Game Informer. I'm here with Jeff Cork. It's like we never left. It's like we never left. Leo Vader's here. Hey, great to be back. And I'm Ben Reeves. And we're here to, I'm here, to show you guys Resident Evil 2 Remake. Yeah? Yeah. Have you guys seen this yet? I have. I beat it. Well, I did my first run, and I'm wondering if I should come back for more. Uh, I got the answer to that, Leo. Yeah? You should. There's cool. a little feature in here after you play the game first time. And it locks this. It's called A New Game Second Run. And once you beat the first run with one character, it unlocks the second run for the other with character. With the other character. And I played the game twice with each of the characters, and I unlocked them both. But you I'm... did two first runs, you fool. That's right. So let's correct that and play the second run yes. right now. And we want to show off Claire because we haven't shown a lot of her yet. What is different in a second run? I'm glad you asked, Jeff. Thank you. Heart hidden questions. Yeah, I'm uh, well, the first thing you'll notice is if you played the game, these intros are much head. shorter, so they kind of trim up the intro cutscene, which is nice, kind of get the story started. You start off in a whole new area as well, and there's as opposed to Claire's first run, we're going to start in a whole new area. That's right. Interesting. So you might remember you actually play through this this gas station, yeah, in your first run, and they've skipped all that because it's mostly a tutorial. And they, like, just get right to it. So we have not edited this at all. This is actually how it plays. What the hell is going on? Uh, yeah, it's almost more like a montage, just reminding you of everything that happened. Yeah. Wait, you're a cop? Uh, it's pretty quick. Yeah. The other yeah. thing is you'll start in a new area. You get uh, sort of a different route through the police station. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the, your, the things you learned from the first time will be helpful. Like, hey, this is where I need to go to get this. But because you're starting in a different place, your route is going to be different, so mm -hmm. it feels very different. And then on top of that, Claire and Leon have different stories. And, like, the middle parts of their game are different anyway. Like, they go to different places. Right. So you add that all together, and it's it feels like a new game campaign, in a sense. Even though the lot, a lot of the places are the same, like mm -hmm. it is definitely worth playing twice. Right. The original Resident Evil 2 did something very similar, right? right. They had something called the zapping system where you'd play through it once, and then when you played through it a second time, things that you did uh -huh. the first time around could affect your second run with the other character. So like a uh, door might be unlocked, for example. Right. That doesn't go quite like that in mm -hmm. this, uh, but the game is different okay. enough sure to make it worth playing there. again. Hey, that doesn't look like her normal outfit. No, this is, um, it's called the Elza Walker costume. It's her motorcycle outfit. Yeah. Because little known fact, when they first started working on Resident Evil 2, the main character was Elza Walker, and she was a motorcycle enthusiast or a stunt driver or something. So this is like a little nod to that. History's first Chuck Green. That's I'm right. Mm. Chuck Green, famous protagonist of... Dead Man Walking. Two. Two. Specific. So you should, so you're, when you say play this game twice, you're talking about playing through each of the campaigns twice for a total of four runs? <laughs> uh, hardcore enthusiasts, yes, must play. Okay. Uh, specifically, what I'm saying is like, if you like this game and mm. you like what you played, you owe it to yourself to play a second run. How much time did you shave off subsequent runs? Once you kind of figured out where things were or re got reacquainted with the layouts and all that stuff. That's a good question. Thank you. So my first run was about 10 hours mm -hmm. and it felt longer than Hold that uh -oh. in a good way. Oh, okay. uh, I was oh. like, man, I wish this took longer, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just felt a little bit longer than 10 hours, Yeah. but I believe the clock. Claire. My second run took five. So nice. Really? Yeah. How are you doing? I shaved off a lot of time. Just came out of nice. So the cool thing about this is when you play through the first time, you're seeing it from Leon's perspective. Mm -hmm. So he's been in the How are you doing? He's been in the police station for a little while now, right. and like done a bunch of stuff. And now he got back here. Mm -hmm. The second run, you're seeing it from Claire's perspective. Very cool. Pretty cool. What about your first run as Claire? So if you had done the first run as Claire, she would be standing where Leon is. Really? That's right. Okay, I, I didn't understand that whole aspect of it. That's right. That's interesting. I Which didn't... version is canonical? Mine. <laughs> All right. Don't worry about me. I a call from question. Konami this morning. And I was like, Konami, you didn't make this game. Why are you calling me? And they're like, I don't know. We'll get in touch with Capcom. Hey, let's get through this. Both of 
us. Let's get through this. So the first run, too, I don't know if we're being overly detailed here, but you don't go out here at all. Right? Yeah. So this is kind of neat. All right, I think I can sneak past the zombie. How much new content like this is there in the second run? New areas? Is there? Is it substantial or is it a lot of recycled stuff? Uh, I, Think don't know, I don't know if I'd put a perspe uh, percentage on it. Mm -hmm. What I would say is it felt substantially new to do it with the other character mm -hmm. because like this area is new, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. then she as a character has a different campaign than Chris or that, sorry, than Leon. <laughs> and so like there's a middle part of the game that's completely different anyway. And then you add those two together and it feels, you know, it feels worth playing. Mm -hmm. And she has uh, different weapons. Yeah. In the second run. That feel know. really different. That quick draw army feels like completely different from anything in Leon's first yeah, run. Yeah. You don't get that in the first run, even if you do it as Claire, mm -hmm. which is nice. It's a fun weapon. And it's a really cool weapon. Look at this. Just look at it. Mm hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm trying to look at it. You guys move your heads. Mm hmm. Wow. Yeah. So you don't get this in the first playthrough. Yeah. But now, if I remember correctly, the second playthrough. In the original Resident Evil 2, wasn't there like a costume or a key or something you could get by a dead body near an ambulance or something outside? Oh, that sounds familiar, yeah. Yeah. Is that in what this? What about it? I liked it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, is, can you, is it similar is, to that? Like, are you getting... Is that key in this? Yeah, specifically. Uh, yeah. It's, I think, his brother. Nice. Very good. Yeah. Very good. That's my joke. Didn't work. Uh, the map's pretty cool because it highlights stuff when you walk close to it. Ah. So it's like, all right, sweet. There's an herb over here I should grab. There is a quick turn as well that I still have trouble with. What's the problem? Oh, oh gosh. So you flick the stick back. Uh huh. And uh, there you go. And press circle or B. So let's see. Oh, no. So this is a normal gun. Yep. <laughs> and then this is the quick draw gun. Look at there. Sadie Adler. Problem is, it takes a long time to reload. Right. And even though it fires really fast, you kind of still want to take your time and line up the headshots. Something I took a while to learn. Big difference between a headshot and a brain shot. Oh. Shooting them in the face will stun them fine, but shooting them in the brain is how you uh, really do damage. That's the best way, because then you can like, take you, them down. What's and it the really difference? blows up. It blows up their brain, too. And that's the only time you know a zombie's really dead, is when their oh. brain blows up. Otherwise, they could get up at any time. Like there. Yep. When he ran over, it just got back up. Also, I don't recommend just blowing through all your ammo in one run. Yeah, I wished I was right playing now. it on PC just so I could have the mouse accuracy because every bullet matters so much. But yeah. But all yeah. Right. So now we can go into the police station proper. So playing through second run with Claire, which like I said, I've done first run with Leon and then started the second run with Claire. It feels almost like an alternate universe on it or something an alternate take because you fight a lot of the same enemies oh, no. and you're here at a time where it feels like leon was here or you're at least right after him and you're picking up the same items and there's different items in the same places like i'm not sure exactly if anything comes of that alternate universe or if it's just a little bit of a twist to make it more fun and not really part of the story yeah they way. have things like where you come across the remains of a boss that leon had defeated in his playthrough or anything like that uh, no, not quite to that degree. Uh, you do, like, so this area in here, when you start with the first playthrough, you enter into the the big hall mm -hmm. in the police station, which you've probably seen. You, in the don't, demo. you don't get to this area of the police station, this, mm -hmm. this wing, at least this part of it, until late in the game. Okay. And we basically started here. So we've got to work our way over to the police station, which is right, sorry, the main hall, which is right here. Okay. But it's not as easy to get to for us. Mm -hmm. But an so. example of what I'm talking about is one of the, uh, a weapon locker in the police station. It's the same weapon locker in the same place, but it just has a different weapon in it for both characters. Oh, yeah. So there are little differences like that that are, I like, to be clear. So we made it to our save room, which is nice. Home sweet home. Good old music. Oh. But I like this game a lot so far. 
I, I liked parts of Resident Evil 7, and this game really is just all of the good parts. All yeah. of the exploration and puzzles with better combat, more interesting enemies. And I'm really... I had a lot of fun with my first run. Now, Leo, mm-hmm. did you play Resident Evil 2 in its original incarnation? Never. Really? Never touched the damn so thing. So this was all new to you? Yes. How does it hold up? Like, the core of it. It felt modern. Okay. There were times where the combat felt a little rigid... Yeah. Where you're just standing there trying to pop off headshots on zombies mm-hmm. and felt kind of repetitive. Yeah. But when you're in a really stressful situation, it really works yeah. to make it tense and hard to take the enemies out in the way that it, it should be hard. Yeah. I mean, like, specifically the story itself and everything. I mean, like, the combat has been tweaked, obviously, since the mm-hmm. original release. But do you feel like the overall narrative frame is pretty solid like nothing really stood out yes at, at the umbrella stuff you know the kind of grander mystery yes yes i was more interested in it in resident evil 2 remake than i ever had been before because mm-hmm. i would jump in in four five and six and it would i would seem i guess kind of cool maybe but it was just hard to care about i didn't really have incentive to yeah but this story is really grounded in a way that makes it interesting to see leon go through that kind of story yeah. and make those revelations what do you think of this guy specifically? Well, I was gonna say, Cork, you had asked about like seeing things that happened in the first playthrough. Yeah, is this guy? You actually get to learn where he came from, I guess, in the original first playthrough. Okay, <laughs> I'm wasting all my ammo, which is a bad move. But That's fine. when you start this, you're just like, oh, there's that guy. Yeah, like, and that already happened. Right. That's cool. I gotta get out of here. This is all very bad. Yeah, it's weird. I have not played Resident Evil 2 since like it, it came out, but I played so much of it. I love that game. Oh, yeah. It was the best. Yeah. It was a great game. And this is... I'm glad it exists because mm-hmm. now fans will obviously love yeah. this, but I think people who never got to experience that game originally, mm-hmm. that's hard to go back to. Yeah. Like, it is very dated. Yep. Uh, but this is fun, mm-hmm. and I think it strips away the things that are dated about the original but keeps a lot of the stuff that's fun yeah and it remixes a lot of it too so it still feels fresh now i know that like the original resident evil is not wanting for a remake but you kind of wish that they've given it this treatment or do you feel like you, one yeah or do you feel like you've played so much resident evil the original one that you'd rather than move on to some other entries in the series uh yeah i mean i'm a huge fan of the remake that they did on the GameCube. Mm-hmm. And, uh-oh, who's that guy? He's got a hat. Mr. X? Could be. Leon hasn't shot his hat off yet. No. But yeah, to answer your question, like, I think I would like them to just keep going and yeah. do something new. Like, what's the follow-up? And I think there's probably room to continue doing remakes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I love this one. So it'd be cool to see more games remade in this style. But that original GameCube mm-hmm. one, a remake of one, it still holds up pretty yeah. well. Like the controls are tanky, but like visually, it still looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. And whether they remake three like this or whatever they could possibly do, I'm just I'm happy that Resident Evil has a modern personality to it now. Yeah. And if this is a indication of what future Resident Evils are going to be like, I think the series is in a very good place. Also, very scary. Yeah. <laughs> I played it in the dark with headphones on. My God, so scary. Yeah, surprisingly scary. What is the scariest moment? Man, I don't even want to give it away, honestly. Yeah. There are, there are parts where you're hearing things. <laughs> yeah. There's um, some of it's, um, <sighs> you know, not say. a set piece moment. It's just like stuff that happens in the game too mm-hmm. randomly. Yeah. That's what I think is so special about it is... The way encounters feel organic and unpredictable and systemic. Yes. It never feels too scripted. You know, occasionally things are supposed to happen, Mm -hmm. but most of it is just they have these really strong systems that are built for horror and they work really well. There's a liquor in here. Can zombies and liquors and other enemies follow you through? Oh my God. Can they follow you through doors that you've closed? They will bang on them a couple times first, so you'll get kind of a heads up. So one thing I... I don't think liquors can, based on my experience. But yes, zombies can. A lot of enemies can. Okay. Uh, And part of the fun is figuring out, like, okay, is that guy going to follow me in here? Or am I safe? 
Again, it's been so long. Is that new to the remake, or were they doing that? I don't think they were doing that. In they were not the following no. you through doors. Yeah. Uh, not normal creatures. Were right. Not, no. So, yeah, we can see the better view of the PlayStation. So, in the first game, you start out. You know, first playthrough, you start here, and you have to get the knife to go in through here. Mm -hmm. But when I came in, started all the way over here, migrated over here, and it, and this was open already. Yeah. So that's kind of a nod to like, okay, well, maybe Leon did that. That's kind of one of those things. Oh, okay. So you run into a few things like that where you're like, oh, this is already done. And I can just keep going through. Mm -hmm. I don't need to get the knife for that. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of nice. And the PlayStation is such a strong setting that I think it totally lends itself to multiple <laughs> visits. Mm -hmm. I feel like I know it so much better than I did early on. Right. You know, you use the map less and less eventually. Yeah. Like, it is really nice to like just get a really good lay of the land and know exactly where you should be going. Mm -hmm. It felt it felt like the house in Resident Evil Seven when you're just walking around solving puzzles there mm -hmm. earlier on for like the first half, which just felt like the strongest part of that game for me. Right. It's a bigger part of this game. It felt like, or at least maybe percentage wise, not bigger, but you spend a lot of time here, and I think it's really fun. All right. There's All right. zombies in here. Oh, here's that weapons locker I yeah. was talking about. Here's a little cool thing. Uh, I did something wrong because I think I forgot to pick something up, but you can get this weapon way or earlier in the second run than you could in the first run. Oh, cool. right. Oh, there you go. There you can see him opening doors. Bastards. Bastards. Let's try to get this headshot, which is kind of hard to line up. Mm-hmm. Oh, get out of here. Animations like that are really impressive. And even though this gun is like pretty powerful. It, it, takes, it definitely blows people's heads up way faster than it takes forever to reload. And uh, that kind of adds some tension to it oh. in a way that I like. Oh, take it. There's almost a, like a timing aspect to it yeah. where it's like I'm waiting for that guy's head to like come into view so I can shoot him. Mm hmm. All right. Yeah, the ammo scarcity in this game is a real factor. It's when you miss, it really hurts. Yeah. You know? I feel like it's really well balanced too, because even though I like always felt like it was on the edge, I never totally ran out of everything. Mm-hmm. I yeah, and if I did, I would be able to squeak by enemies I needed to at the right. time, and then when I had ammo, I'd be strategically taking out the enemies that were the biggest problem for me. So yeah. that I could get through these areas. It's sort of like to. balancing out your health versus your ammo. So yeah. which one can I burn more of? It's like, oh, I'm low on ammo. So I should just like run through this area, take the hit because I can heal. Yeah. Or if I have enough herbs to make one that makes me more resistant to damage. Yeah. I can just power through getting attacked. Which did they explain that at any point in the game or did you just figure that out, Leo? Uh, they have a tutorial pop-up, I believe, or some kind of note you get. I definitely remember reading Maybe I missed it. it. I just remember it from the original where you could mix all three and it gives you like high defense. Uh-huh. Hmm. I don't know if you knew about that, Quark. <laughs> yeah, there's a note oh, yeah. that's about red herbs, about how they were thought to be useless until recently. Right. You discovered you can mix them. Can you reload from the menu? And Is it faster? Like, does it skip the animation? Like if I wanted to... Wait, going wait, to your wait. inventory, like from your inventory. Oh. Oh no. Yeah. Okay. You can't do that. Lots of times I pick up ammo, ammo, and uh -huh. I didn't have room for it, and I really <laughs> wanted to just combine it with the gun to add it without yeah. having to make a slot for it, but you can't do that, no and that was disappointing. Yeah. Because that'd be super useful. Oh, so here's where it explains the gunpowder. Uh huh. What you can do there, and how you mix. There's like high grade gunpowder and gunpowder, and you can mix them. Mm hmm. If I found exactly once, I found a large gunpowder, and then I held onto it long enough that I found another large gunpowder. And if you mix those both together, you get fifty handgun rounds. Oh my gosh! It was wow. awesome. That's awesome. I was set for thirty minutes with that much ammo. <laughs> it just blew right through it. Yeah, pretty much. All right, there's a puzzle in this room. You guys want to try to figure it out? I would no, love to. we can only show twenty minutes, and we're at nineteen minutes no! and thirty seconds. So, oh, sorry, Cork. But this is your first assignment to figure out the locks. <laughs> oh, well. They're basically the initials of all their first names. Good luck. That's all I need do on that one. Yeah. Oh, where am I going to find out what their names Reeves, are? Reeves, you got to outro us, dude. There's only 10 right. seconds. <laughs> See you guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys play Resident Evil twice.